8 a.m., New Year's Day. You're all still in bed. You're sleeping off, celebrating the night before. You're dreaming about resolutions you're not going to keep. And inevitably, in a few hours, you're going to roll out of bed and you're going to head to brunch. I really hope you guys made a reservation. I'm walking in the door to my restaurant. I've got an extra large coffee in my hand. It's my second of the day, and I'm really hoping that the caffeine is going to kick in soon. Last night was New Year's Eve, so we served up specials like truffle chow on mushi, Nantucket Bay scallop crudo, crispy Pekin duck, in addition to a million dumplings, wok char udon noodles, and pork belly buns. My back and my feet tell me that we fed everybody who lives in Boston, but in reality, it was about 250 or 260 people. This means we're out of everything. So the minute I walk in the door, I'm hit with a chorus of chef, 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 chef. Chef, I'm out of bok choy. Chef, I'm out of chicken stock. Chef, I think the dishwasher's broken. And my favorite, chef, we're out of eggs. <laughs> I put my apron on, I slide into my clogs, I throw some pots on the already crowded stove, I check my prep list, I check with my cooks, I find out what's the most important thing, what do we need first, and I get moving. I look over at my saute cook. He's worked for us for two weeks and he looks panicked. I make a mental note, be encouraging. I pat him on the back, I say, Sam, you've got this. I'm opening brunch because my sous chef is sleeping off a hangover from the night before, and my other sous chef quit a few weeks earlier, with no notice writing me an email because the work was too hard, and it was on a day that I had a guest chef coming in for dinner. So getting ready for brunch, a front of the house manager comes up to me. She tells me it's 11.25. I, I think that five minutes ago it was 8 a.m., so I'm not sure how that happened. And she lets me know that there's a line around the corner. Now, we're a busy restaurant. I like to call us the little kitchen that could. But the reality is, is that I was just on a reality TV show. So we're busting at the seams busy. And the real reality is that my kitchen didn't get any bigger. I don't have any more staff. And the staff I have on are probably all hungover from last night. 11.30, the doors open. And the dining room gets flat sat. And that means that every seat in the restaurant gets sat at the same time. And all of those people are going to want to eat at the same time. 12 o'clock. I'm expediting. I'm running food. I'm jumping on stations. I'm trying to dig people out of the weeds. I keep moving. We're out of bok choy. I 86 bok choy. I call my purveyors. I beg for two cases to come in in the afternoon. I switch to Gailan. I keep moving. Now we're running out of bread. I call the bakery, I beg for 24 baguette, I jump back on the line. It's one o'clock, my sous chef walks in the door. I'm busy texting my PM dishwasher, saying, no, I'm sorry, you cannot call in sick tonight. Did I mention we were running out of food? <laughs> I walk back through the prep kitchen and my sous chef is standing still. Never a good sign. He's holding his hand, he's ghost white. And I look at him and say, what happened? He says, I caught myself. I say, let me see, it's actually bad. He's a big kid, he starts to go down. I grab him from behind, I get him onto a milk crate, I bang around the corner, I go to the bar, and I get him a glass of orange juice. I may or may not have put a little bit of whiskey in it. <laughs> I keep him talking. I bandage his hand. I finish butchering the salmon that he was working on. I'd love to send him home tonight, but he's the only person I have to work saute, so I figure out in my head how I'll get him off from work tomorrow. I keep moving. It's 3 p.m. My dishwasher comes up to me and says, Chef, I can't take the cardboard out because the dumpster is full. Now, if our dumpster is open even this much, we're going to get a $250 fine from the city. And there's this woman that lives in the neighborhood that walks around taking pictures of everybody's trash and sending them to the police. So I know that I need to get the dumpster shut. I go outside and I know that the reason it's overflowing is there's a box that hasn't been broken down somewhere inside of there. Even though I have signs all over the restaurant that say, please break down every box completely. 
The only way to fix this is to actually take the cardboard out, get into the dumpster, find the offensive box, break it down, stomp on everything, and get it flat so that I can close the lid so that I don't get the fine. So in the dumpster I go. And as I'm breaking down the boxes, my phone rings in my pocket. It's my friend. She's pregnant, and she's going to have a baby. And she's really excited to take this time in her life to slow down and concentrate on what really matters and just really be at one with the universe. And I'm literally standing in the garbage. I'm freezing. I've got no coat on. I'm almost 40. I never see my family. And I wonder, not for the first time, what am I doing with my life? I can feel tears hot behind my eyes start. And I see 20 years of restaurant work flash before my eyes. And then I remember, I was a square peg in a round hole before I found this work. I didn't fit anywhere. And I love the magic of cooking. And I love making people happy. And I love the chaos, and I love the fire, and I love the hustle, and I love the crazy. It's four o'clock. The back door opens, and one of my line cooks comes out looking for me. I smile, and I keep moving. After all, it's time to get ready for dinner service. <laughs>